If you're shooting video, chances are you might want to add some movement into your shot. Of course, there's loads of times when using a static shot just like this is the kind of shot you want to go for, but adding movement in can just add an extra visual element. It can pull the viewer in. It just makes the shot a little bit more dynamic and it can make it way more interesting for anyone just watching your video. And today we're going to talk about two different ways you can add movement to your images. We're going to talk about shooting handheld and adding movement that way, or shooting with something like this, a gimbal. Now, if you're not familiar with gimbals, essentially they allow you to stabilize your camera, so your movement is very smooth, it's very cinematic, it looks really, really good. So generally speaking, they are gonna give you the best option if you are moving quite a lot. If you're walking with the camera, if you're moving through a scene, if you're following someone, this is gonna give you much smoother footage. I'll give you an example. This is me shooting with this gimbal, actually moving, walking with the camera. And then this is me shooting exactly the same place, but with the camera just in my hand, so handheld shooting. So how do you decide whether you should be using a gimbal for your shots or just shooting handheld? There's pros and cons to both. Let's talk about them. So first up, let's talk about handheld video. I actually shoot a lot of handheld video. And the reason for that is it's very convenient, it's very quick, and it's very easy a lot of the time. A lot of the things I'll shoot won't necessarily involve walking. They'll involve me being able to move the camera like this instead of having to actually follow someone or walk through a scene. With image stabilization these days, especially on modern cameras, that is much easier to keep that very steady even when shooting handheld. So you can still get some very smooth shots. Something like this, for example, was shot entirely handheld and I was able to smooth it out a little bit in post and use a couple of other tricks to get some smoother shots. So for example, shooting at a higher frame rate and slowing it down, which smooths out a few of those bumps and also shooting wider. So shooting at a wider focal length will often smooth out some of those bumps. You'll see more of the bumps if it's a tighter focal length. Now shooting that particular scene handheld meant that I was able to move around very quickly, very easily, get into tighter spaces and kind of really just follow the action completely handheld without having to think about using something like this. However, in post-production, I then needed to stabilize some of the shots. I needed to work with it a little bit longer Whereas if I had used something like this, I would have ended up with a faster post-production time because I wouldn't have had to do so much work to stabilize that footage. Gimbals have come down quite a lot, both in terms of price, but also in terms of weight and size. I mean, take this for example. This is the DJI RS3 Mini. This is a lot, lot smaller than a lot of gimbals I've used. I originally started out with a big two-handed gimbal which was huge and it meant that in certain situations, so if I went to do a promo shoot for a client, if it was a food shoot and I was in a kitchen and it was quite tight, it just was crazy to have this big contraption. Whereas something like this makes it a lot easier. It means that I can get some more dynamic shots while keeping that camera steady. If I take this tripod off, you can see just how small this is. And that kind of gets rid of that argument that handheld shooting is easier if you're in a tighter environment because this is tiny and I can really hold this very close, but I know I'm getting stable shot. Now a gimbal is fantastic if you want to get a more cinematic feel to your footage. There's a lot of things you can do with a gimbal to mimic the look of something like a crane. So moving the shot from higher up and coming down, for example, following someone, tracking someone. A gimbal is able to do a lot of that kind of stuff which you just wouldn't be able to do nearly as well while shooting handheld. Even with improved image stabilization, just walking with the camera is not going to produce those smooth shots. Now that said, sometimes you might not want a super smooth shot. If you were shooting a disaster movie or something where there's a lot of tension in the scene, actually shooting handheld can help add to that. You know, a little bit of a shaky cam kind of feel, and you'll notice this in a lot of sort of tense disaster movies or movies where someone's being chased or something like that can add that same feeling and enhance it in the scene. It kind of tricks our brains into thinking, oh, this looks, this looks like there's someone there with a camera and they're having to run. So it's shaking because the monster's too scary or something like that. It kind of evokes a feeling of kind of news footage. It looks and feels a bit more real because the camera is actually shaking as you would expect in that situation. Whereas if it is too smooth sometimes, it almost is a bit immersion breaking. It doesn't convey the panic and the, the adrenaline of that moment. So sometimes a handheld shot that is shaking is exactly what you want to go for. But most of the time, you're probably going to get better footage 
from something like this. It tends to look more professional, it looks more cinematic. You can actually see exactly what's going on and it just adds a lot to the overall finish of a video. Whether you're shooting a short film or whether you're shooting a promo video, actually using something like this can really add a lot of professionalism to the shot. Not to mention, and this is really important and something that I forget about all the time, but if you take something like this to a shoot, to a client shoot, and the camera's mounted on, it just looks like you know what you're doing, which shouldn't matter because either you do or you don't, but it does matter. It matters to the client, it gives them some confidence in what you're doing. And I've done that before where I've turned up with a mirrorless camera, just a mirrorless camera and a lens to do the shoot. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm gonna get out of it, but they don't know that I know that. And it just looks like I'm a guy with a camera who's just rocked up to do whatever. Whereas with this, it feels like there's a whole setup, there's a whole system. They look at it and they think, yes, this is, this is the one and I'm excited about it. And that is important, actually. Client perception is a really important thing and keeping them confident and comfortable when you're doing promo videos. On the other side of that, when I have rocked up and just shot handheld for a promo video for a client, it's because speed is of the essence or I need to maneuver around people or I need to get into tight spaces. It's a situation where I need to be adaptable and handheld shooting really allows for that. But outside of that, I'll generally take a gimbal now. It just allows me to get those better shots and a better end result. It kind of just comes down to knowing the kinds of shots you want to get, knowing the end result you want to achieve, and then executing on that in camera, right? So I've done it before where I want the smooth shots, but I've done it handheld and I've had to then stabilize in post, not ideal. But if you know exactly what you want, you can choose whether to use a gimbal or whether to shoot handheld for that end result and then achieve that before you even get to post, making post-production much easier and much quicker as well. I suppose ultimately, this is a tool for a job. It's very useful in a lot of different situations. You might not need it for every job, but it's super handy to have one of these, especially something like this. I, I've got to be honest with you, using the Mini, the RS3 Mini, I'm in love with the size of this. This is awesome. This is such a useful thing because it's so easy to just take this out with you. Now we've been using this, the RS3 and the RS3 Pro, so you can check them all out by following the links down in the description. I'd love to hear if you have any other thoughts on using gimbals versus handhelds. What do you do? What do you prefer to do? What have you gotten used to doing? I've gotten very used to handheld, but getting back into gimbals has been fantastic. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Pop them down in the comments. Of course, don't forget to like and subscribe as well. There's new content all the time. I'll see you in the next video, but until then, as always, thanks for watching.